Every race is different. You can never be fully prepared for a course. It takes my whole body to turn through a gate, starting at my feet, through my core, to my arms. If I hit a gate, I can't think about it. The race isn't over until that line is crossed. It's my instinct to take risks. I'm always striving for that perfect run. I'll always chase that feeling. And how brilliantly does she do it? Olympic bronze medalist Jessica Fox joins us right here. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Interesting that we saw on there, you talked about the touching the gate and the two-second penalty, which, of course, is what went down in Rio. How, uh, you obviously went through a range of emotions there. There was the despair, was there anger. Where are you at now? I guess I've had a bit of time to, to digest the Rio experience. I definitely felt um, mixed emotions that day. I crossed the line... Uh, went into first place and, you know, was just really excited and happy. There we can see the two-second penalty and maybe two mi one or two minutes after I crossed the line, I saw an asterisk come up, which is the, the little star that shows that the, the, the run is under video review. And I've had that star this season before and it's, it's come up with a 50-second penalty. When I thought I won the race, I've been relegated to 10th place. So I had this, you know, my, my, I had this feeling in my... I thought I was going to be sick. And so I was thinking, you know, please not at the Olympics, not a 50-second penalty. So when I saw the touch come up, um, it, was, it was, you know what, that, that's OK. I do have the touch. I'll accept it. I went into second place. I was happy for my friend Luca Jones from New Zealand. She, she won the silver. And, yeah, third place, a second Olympic medal. And it's something I'm really proud of. It's amazing to have both of those with, obviously, gold coming from Tokyo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the full Going set, yeah. <laughs> on its way. Um, that's, that would be the, the perfect scenario. That would be the dream. I, I'm definitely excited about the next four years. I'm hungry. I actually, I actually was a bit frustrated with my racing um, in Rio and wanted to race again, so I went and raced the last two World Cup races because... Because you hadn't planned to do that originally, had No, you? I'd planned to come home, have a break, um, be a normal 22-year-old, but I felt that I didn't give everything I, I had on that day in Rio because it was really windy and I felt like I had to hold back a little bit just to, to make sure I didn't hit any gates, which in the end I did, but um, I did enough to secure the bronze medal, but I, I, I just felt like I needed to get out there and race freely, and that's what I did at the World Cup, so you, I was happy. There's a few dings in your gold yeah, in the bronze medal that you got here. You didn't, have, you didn't go out with Ryan Lochte afterwards. Was that from partying? Did you just knock it a couple of times? No, or? not even. I, I didn't take it out partying because I didn't... Uh, pff, I mean, I've heard some terrible stories, like yeah. the guy who didn't have money, so he paid his taxi driver with his Olympic gold medal. Oh, like, yeah, but he was the I have a giant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jess, can I ask? I saw you in London. You were great, obviously. Rio, you were great. But I'm a child of the '80s, and I've never seen you do this. I think this is your next challenge. Ah, okay. I think we've got it here. Yes, there we go. And, oh, uh, yes. This is a solo man ad. <laughs> I've never seen you. What? I've never seen this. Go down a cliff face uh, in a jungle. Could have done oh. this in Rio, into the water. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, so you if you see how they were talking, we you would knock that back. You know what? We would love to see you become the solo woman. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, could be the next Red Bull commercial. I'll have to talk to yeah. them about going yeah. down the forest, yeah. jumping yeah. out of water. <laughs> And you've done a Kuznetsova, you were telling us earlier, with the plat in your face, is that right? Yeah, I was having... I, I can definitely empathise. I've... Um, my hair's getting a bit long, I need to cut it, but m I've flicked, you know, it, you're moving your body a lot and you've got to look to the next gate and I flicked it around and definitely hit myself <laughs> in the eye before, so I don't know if I'd stop and give it a trim, but um, I can... Definitely, I'd, I'd need a haircut soon. Jess, you have some quirky moments, I guess, on the circuit, but... Was it true that you, because your mum, of course, and your dad were decorated kayakers, that you raced someone who was racing against your mum at some stage, you know, and that she's lasted the generation? Yeah, Stepanka Hilgatova. She was the Olympic champion in Sydney 2000 in 1996. She raced against my mum and she's still going. Her, her niece is now racing against my sister. So she's, you know, 40... 
eight now, wow. I think, and she's still Put top a three. Put a thermos in there. Get <laughs> 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 a you know crossword. I'd, <laughs> I'd definitely be very happy to, to look like she does it at 48, to be as fit as she is. She's, yeah, she's a legend of the sport. As are your parents. must be amazing because I think you and your dad have both won events, the same uh, uh, event, uh, and I think we have some, a photograph here. That whole family connection, clearly so crucial for you. Yeah, so um, I guess 2014 was probably a really special year because both my parents won the World Championships in America. Um, <laughs> 20, in, so in 19... When was this it? is 2014 right yep, now. This is yep. 2014, mm -hmm. and the, throughout the whole week, everyone was like, oh, you know, could she do it? Could she... Could she win the World Championships where her parents won it 25 years before? And, um, yeah, I, ma I managed to do that. So it was really special to share that with them. Can I ask you about um, bit left field, but the fancy bears, the Russian ha um, hackers who have hacked you and released your WADA details to the world. You're not the only elite athlete right around the world that's uh, been a victim of this. H how did that make you feel? Uh, I, I was a bit... Um, I guess flustered by it all. It was a bit. It was a bit strange. But at the same time, I thought, "Oh, this is this is kind of weird. Why would they want to hack me?" Um, mm. And I, I have nothing to hide. It's a TUE, which is a, a therapeutic use exemption, which allows me to, in the case of an emergency, administer an EpiPen um, if I have a severe allergic reaction. And that all came from a training camp in Rio. It was a bit of a, a nightmare training camp where. Um, everything just went wrong that week and at a training session I got out to do some stretches on the grass and I noticed there were these little ants and when you live in Australia you see something small and you think, you know, we've got snakes, we've got spiders, crocodiles, mm. whatever. Anyway, these ants bit me on my leg, on my foot and within five minutes I'd swelled up. I was like wow. rash everywhere. I, I, yeah, almost had to go to hospital. So um, I guess that was a good lesson. You know, you wouldn't want that yeah. to happen between your semi and final. Do you still keep in touch with Prince William? Uh, obviously. Yeah, I message him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, there you are. I think that was uh, in London. Another nice moment for you. Yeah, that was that was definitely a very very cool moment um, to have a chat with Prince William and Princess Kate. Um, you know, to, to relive those London moments and and now have. The Rio memories as well. It just makes me so excited looking towards Tokyo. Yeah, well, we look forward to Tokyo as well. Thank you so much for dropping.